All right. Shall we start? I think it's is the time. It's great to see so many of you. Uh, I'm, I'm really impressed. Um, Started in 2000. And thank you so much. I wanted to first of all thank everybody for uh, for making the time to to come and join us for this event today. Um, uh, we are uh, the whole team of the project is almost there, so I will introduce everybody. Um, but it is a special moment for us because this is something that we've been working on for the past uh, year and a half on in a very collaborative way with all the researchers, um, the artists, uh, our wonderful uh, advisory board, um, and not to not to uh, forget the designer team. I see Jost is there and, and uh, David probably as well. Um, so I'll introduce everybody in a second. So first of all, a great thank you to the audience and a great thank you to everybody who put such an amazing, creative, inspirational energy to this project. Um, and this is really the first uh, very tangible um, uh, product um, of our research project collaborative, especially uh, the and a half ago. Um, so before we go to the program, I wanted to briefly say uh, who is behind this project. So I will start with the advisory board um, uh, because this is a multi uh, multidisciplinary and multi audience really participation project. Um, so in our advisory board, we have uh, artists, uh, researchers, academics, and also uh, representatives of cultural institutions. Um, we have George Mahashe, Anna Konik, Martin Bach, Solve Corum, Anais Lelouch, and uh, Mirjam de Bruyne. And so in Istanbul, uh, others couldn't make it. You will also learn more about them uh, from, from the website when we launch it in a second. It was my first mural in 2003. We have the amazing artists who really are the core of our project, um, who are at the core and at the center. And, and, and this platform is really also a tribute to all the amazing work that they are doing. Uh, so with us, we have uh, Marisa Cornejo, uh, Diala Brisley, who will be talking or trying to talk uh, a little bit. She's very sick, but she joined us um, a little bit later. Uh, Dahab Faitinga, who is there with her husband, Dominic Mahum, who is going to be, who is her producer and, and, and sound assistant today. Um, we also have Cecilia Salinas. I think I saw your, your face in a second, a second ago. Uh, we also have Johannes Mullet makanan and Mitkal al -Hazar with us. And there are others who are already part of the website, but due to technical reasons mainly, because they are based in Sudan and in uh, in Myanmar, they couldn't join us physically uh, on the launch. And uh, now we go to the design team. So um, this is Danki uh, that really helped us to create this amazing uh, virtual space. Uh, Joost Reiter, who is with us, uh, and uh, David Pino, uh, and we will tell more about them uh, in a little bit. And not uh, not to forget uh, the incredible research team, um, all the researchers that, that, that are working on this project. Um, so Trude uh, Stapnes is there, uh, Cindy Horst, who will be speaking in a second, uh, Marta Nielsen, um, and we have Sarah Christopherson. I don't see I don't see your picture yet, but I hope uh, we can see you in a second. Um, and then myself. So um, just briefly to introduce the program, we will start with a short introduction of the research project. Cindy, we will uh, will do that. Uh, then we're going to move to the presentation uh, and the official launch of the uh, of the website, um, the virtual platform. That will be done by me and by uh, Sarah, who has been really at the core of creation uh, of this platform. And then uh, the most important part of the project, uh, performances of uh, Daha Patinga um, and a discussion with her. And then presentation of art uh, by Diala Brisley. And, um, and, and at the end, we're going to end up with a session of uh, question and answers. So please. Hold on your questions till the end. Um, you got you are all muted uh, at the moment, uh, so this is for the uh, for the reasons um, uh, that when you want to raise a question, you can either type them in the uh, message um, box or 
uh, you can raise your question, raise your hand um, virtually, of course, uh, during the uh, question and answer session and the moderator, that will be Sarah. Uh, she will then um, be able to call up on you and then you will be unmuted uh, to be able to ask uh, your questions. All right, so we'll no further ado, we'll go now to Cindy and uh, hear about the project. All right, thanks. Um, first of all, it's so wonderful to see so many familiar as well as new faces today. And uh, what I'm trying to do in this short presentation is to show you what a cool project Inspire is. So I think that's a very easy task. Um, Inspire studies the role of artists, art and activism in and after war in Sudan, Myanmar and amongst exiled artists who are based in Europe. When we developed the project, uh, there were three elements that especially captured our curiosity. First, we were really curious about this concept of inspiration. On the one hand, inspiration relates to transcendent influences that energize, motivate us. On the other, it reflects also our own power to move the senses, emotions, intellect of others. It's a potentially really powerful force that can create something new as it pushes us to stay close to what matters most to us. And this is done often by exploring the unknown and also what might be deeply uncomfortable. Uh, second, we were curious about the both the spatial and the temporal dimensions of inspiration. With the impact of social media, digital connections, there's no art or artist that's only local or only global. The relationship between the artist, the audience and the art is influenced by the where and when of these interactions. And this is highly relevant also in the context we study as narratives on violent conflict and exile are understood differently by differently positioned people in different locations and also change over time. Third, we wanted to experiment with new forms of collaboration between artists, academics and activists, especially in our methods and in our way of learning. We have, for example, already conducted a workshop in which we explored the concept of inspiration with a group of artists in Norway, and some of you are here. Uh, and we will conduct also a number of arts-based workshops in the next year or so. Uh, of course, the website is also another great example of trying out new ways of interacting and collaborating. And this is just the first phase of it. Um, so from those three interests, the INSPIRE project was created and we were fortunate enough to receive funding from the Research Council of Norway for a four year project, which started in 2020 and it will run until 2023. And within PRIO, the project is hosted within the Center on Culture and Violent Conflict. We focus on art as creative endeavor. So more than just the finished products, we are looking at the whole process. The activities that produce aesthetic responses, critiques, affirmations, and this perspective moves our focus beyond just high art. We are interested in how art creates space for new ways of seeing. And we do that in three contexts. Um, first of all, Myanmar. Marta Nielsen and Trude Stapnes focus on, uh, on that uh, case. Marta focuses on artistic exchange amongst artists in Myanmar and Rohingya artists in the refugee camps in Bangladesh and their search for common platforms and a common ground as not just artists but also as humans. In her doctoral research, Trude Stapnes explores how artists challenge, challenge dominant societal narratives through artists' expressions and of course since the coup in Myanmar in February Trude has focused on following the resistance icon and or the camera mic uh takeover uh, and she does that by exploring the many creative ways that artists and activists respond. Um, her interest is in what inspires artists to do this during such a difficult time and also how this work might inspire others. In Sudan, Kasia focuses on the work of artists both in Sudan as well as in the diaspora and with the ongoing conflicts in Darfur and in Eastern Sudan and also in the recent peaceful revolution and the change of the political regime, artistic practice has emerged as a very important way of commenting on and engaging with and questioning political realities in the country. So various arts, including music, as we will uh, uh, we'll see in the, uh, in the website, have played a central role in conflict, in revolution, as well as in peace building in Sudan. 
And then finally, the case of exiled artists. Um, from their spaces in exile, artists have often played important roles in triggering actions for social justice, both amongst the diaspora and also in their places of origin. Uh, Kasia, Sarah and myself will conduct fieldwork with exiled artists in Europe and we will focus specifically on Norway, the Netherlands, Switzerland and France. We will follow the work of exiled artists, conduct creative life story interviews and we will also work together with artists through arts-based workshops. And with that, I'll pass the word on to Kasia. Mm -hmm. All right, wonderful. Thank you, uh, thank you, Cindy, for the introduction to the research. So now we go uh, to the website. Um, and I will, uh, I think what I will do, I will show you the website straight away. So you, so I'm going to share now my uh, screen. Let me just do this. All right, can you see it? I think you can see it, right? So, um, uh, so the website is at the core of our research project. It is uh, even uh, more so relevant given the past year and a half of the pandemic, of course, and the substantial move uh, to the virtual space, including not only as a research site, but also as methods and uh, in the context of our collaboration with artists, artistic creation. So the website is linked to our collaborative approach to the project with a space for exploration for artists, activists and researchers, and it serves several different functions. It allows, for example, to explore the different aspects of the project as it is evolving, creating a live archive of the project. And in a second, you're going to see this because Sarah is going to do the virtual tour of the site. It functions as a space for critical and creative reflection, bringing together and sharing the different aspects that make up the Inspire project. Through the virtual platform, uh, because this is actually going to become, uh, this is the first um, uh, stage right now, this is more of a website, but we are in the process of developing it into a, a virtual collaborative platform. We hope to engage across both different disciplines and different geographies sharing ideas, showing our processes, creating a space that invites for collaboration and co-creation of knowledge on themes and topics related to art and artistic practices in the context of violence, conflict, war and exile. I started a way that you can get to know the artists and activists that are part of the project, learn about the different research activities that are taking place, follow and participate in our news and events. And finally, it is a space that opens this possibility for collaboration between artists, activists and academics. Um, as I said, it is also linked to this methodological approach of the project where the research team uh, sees the platform also as a side of fieldwork in a sense, uh, and a method in studying the questions of artistic inspiration through virtual collaborative methods. So the website was co-constructed. They are being excluded from the national team. It was developed in joint conversations with researchers, designers, uh, the Dunkey team, uh, and the artists. And of course, our advisory board that was very helpful in also uh, uh, giving us ideas on what works, what is useful, how to, how to develop it further. And the key person that I really want to thank a lot uh, for all her dedication and inspiration and creative energy that she put into this is Sarah Christopherson. Um, she is the key person in this process as a dancer and choreographer and a geographer researcher. She has been using her multiple skills and talents to bring this project to its fruition, working closely with artists, researchers and the designer team. So officially, the website is now launched and now I invite Sarah to uh, tell us a little bit more about the content. Thank you, Kasia. Thank you, Kasia. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Word on to you, Farida. 
As Katia said, we're also really grateful to our wonderful design team and um, who've taken great care in designing the platform. And I just want to say two words about the visual identity of this platform um, because they put so much careful thought into it. So working from the idea of the artist's perspective, um, uh, the artist is someone who often works at the fringes of society and therefore can voice concerns before uh, we, uh, before others do. Uh, the Donkey team created a logo of two interacting geometric shapes, which you can see at the top there of the of the landing page. And as you can see, uh, the first is a blue hexagon depicting a lens uh, aperture and stands for the eye of the artist. And the second is a green circle depicting the environment or current situation. So green for less from the and blue for inspiration, wisdom, freedom and hope. And where these two elements meet and overlap, a secondary color appears, symbolizing the artist's view on a given conflict or situation. And I'm now going to give you a little virtual tour of the website. And I've also in the comments section um, now added the link to the website so you can also explore it on your own. Um, and we can just so as you see on this front page here, um, we also we will have there are different artists highlighted. So when you scroll down, you will see some of the artists highlighted and you can go directly to their sites. Um, and these artists um, will um, change each time you enter the website. Um, moving on from there, we can go to the um, overview page of the artists. And here you will see, uh, currently we have nine uh, I know uh, art. Uh... Uh, and as Kasia mentioned, almost all of them are here today, which is really nice. Um, so if you have any questions that you want to ask them at the Q&A at the end, they're also ready for that. Moving on from the overview of the artist page, we can go to the research page. So here we will be adding more information about the different sub projects and research activities taking place that Cindy mentioned in her introduction. Um, so these pages will be um, uh, at least we can uh, just will be adding information as the work evolves, sharing perhaps insights from their fieldwork or articles once they are ready or other material that develops over the next few years of the project. And then finally, we can move on to the news and events page. And on the news and events page, we will uh, be posting both about research activities. So for instance, in the autumn, we are launching a seminar series. So we already have a little bit of a teaser of what you can, um, what will be happening in these uh, seminars. They will happen once a month on Wednesdays. So <laughs> save the date and time. They will be online. Um, and we will also be sharing uh, uh, news about artistic activities and also news from the artists. So if they have a performance or an exhibition or anything like that, we will also do our best to add this to, uh, to the news and events page. And we hope you really, really enjoy exploring this on your own. There's also uh, a team section where you can read more about our team and also just a shorter section which gives more a general introduction to, to the project. Uh, and all the different aspects of it. So now I'll pass the word back on to you, Kasia. Excellent. Thank you, Sarah, very much. I hope you can uh, now all be exploring the website um, online. Um, so now we go to the uh, performance um, of our artists and the encounter with our artists virtually. So first of all, uh, I am. Uh, we are really honored uh, to have with us today uh, Daha Paitinga, together with her husband Dominique, as I mentioned. Uh, she's a well-known Eritrean singer and musician of uh, Kunama heritage. Paitinga, at the age of uh, 14, became a freedom fighter and then later turned to music. 
And as musician, uh, she has developed her own style of music that finds inspiration in Eritrean's rich cultural uh, musical traditions, as well as social contemporary issues that are at the heart of the Eritrean people's concerns at home and in the diaspora. Faitinga, whose original name is Dahap Faitinga, produces music that draws from her roots in the Kunama tribe, in which women and men have equal rights. She was born in 1964 and she joined uh, Eritrean's liberation uh, struggle, was educated by the liberation forces and then stayed a combatant until the liberation in 1991. Her mother grew up in the highlands of Eritrea, while her father was a, a revered figure among the Kunama people fighting for his homeland. He was given the nickname of Fighting Gun, taken from his actual name, Fight Tinga by the British administration in the early 1950s. Um, so a little bit about Faitinga's artistic practice and it's their links to the INSPIRE project. So Faitinga's dream to become a singer came true when she was sent to the Eritrean troops on the front and using her songs as a message of hope and determination. As a freedom fighter turned musician, she has always been interested in music and developed her own style in the field, in the in the in the musical field, but also in the uh, in the combatant field, that represents a blend of several traditional music forms. She often says that I sing about peace, love, and togetherness, since war, conflict, and other disturbances did not bring any positive change to Africa. It only creates refugee crisis, pains, agony, discomfort, and economic hardship. And I bring a music of hope to the people. She composes her own music and interprets work uh, from well-known Eritrean poets and composers. So her artistic practice uh, links with the INSPIRE project in very direct ways. Her music is inspired by the experiences of war, struggle, fight for liberation, and also uh, by many social issues facing the Eritrean and the African and the community, world community at large. She's one of the first Eritrean artists engaged in support of people living with HIV and AIDS and has participated in numerous World AIDS uh, Day events. More recently, since she's moved to, uh, to, uh, to Switzerland, where she lives currently, the themes in her music reflect the experiences of exile and migration of Eritreans scattered around the world. Um, so through her music, she also brings inspiration to activists and social society movements. So today we have an immense uh, pleasure to have Fightinga with us to present, uh, to speak briefly about her new song, and we will play the teaser just in a second. Uh, her new song is entitled But Polika, and it will be released tomorrow, also on our website at 6 p.m., if I remember correctly, 6 p.m., the uh, things that they become bigger time. Uh, this song has been inspired by the experiences of Eritrean youth in the diaspora, and it has been produced in collaboration with Eritrean uh, artists living in Sweden, Switzerland, Germany, and in Eritrea. Um, after the presentation of the teaser, uh, um, uh, Faitinga will, uh, will say a few words, and then she is going to uh, sing her two songs from her uh, Kunama uh, repertoire and play Krar. Uh, and we're going to have a minute of switching uh, microphones, uh, so bear with us. All right, so now we start with the teaser. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned, tomorrow it's going to be uh, uh, released and you can even, uh, for those of us who don't know Tigrinya, uh, there will be English translation, English subtitles, so you can learn about the richness uh, of this uh, incredible song. Dahab, uh, now to you. Welcome. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. Uh, today for me is a good day because I meet different people from the Europe, 
we're talking about uh, Arti. Uh, he killed me my heart, really. Uh, I know about this Tigrinya song. It's going out tomorrow, six o'clock. Uh, this song is very, I don't know, it's the first time this song is, uh, is talking about uh, the young people, the refugee young people. I know everybody in the world from Africa, more in the refugee is coming to the Euro, the special the Eritrean young people. Is coming from Eritrea by the cross to Sudan, from Sudan to Libya, from the Libya by the boat to come to Italy, and uh, he's going to every Europe. This the young people really still now. It start from Eritrea to the Europe. Everybody he die, the young people, especially for the women is many red by the Rashida, it's a sad story. Still now, the die people is not stopped in Europe also. The young people, he die, he killed by self in the train, in the sea, in the house, he killed by knife, it's still, it's going to die. You know, this song, uh, it's a power for the young people by the, words by the melody, by the boys, to explain, to teach him, to give morality, to come stronger. He talking my song about the young people. I want to say for everybody, the singer in Africa, uh, you need to give morality for the young people to work together, to stop the die, enough now. It's very, this song is sad song, a cry song is not uh, easy. Thank you so much again, everybody. Good to see. I have to sing uh, one Kunama song and the Tigrinya song by my Krar. Thank you so much. <laughs> This 
cry song by Kunama language is cry song. Thank you so much. This is Songi. Uh, she's a big star. She died 2017 from Sahai to Baraki before she's living in Holland. She's a big singer. Uh, this is Songi. I love too much. I love the singer. She's my teacher. She's my mother. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Twaitinga. I think we um, we now also all wish that we were all in the same space and that we would all speak uh, Tigenya. But uh, but still, it was really uh, considering the the circumstances. It was really amazing how you managed to uh, to bring across your uh, your message. So now it's up to me to uh, introduce Diala and. Um, First of all, I want to say that I'm really amazed that Diala is here, considering she's actually quite sick. So, so um, thank you so much for that. I'll uh, I'll try to keep it a little bit uh, short because I hope there's some time for questions in the end as well. Yeah. Uh, I'm really happy to be introducing Diala. I've known her for a couple of years now, and uh, find both that she's a, an extremely remarkable person and an amazing artist. I am mesmerized by her work, and particularly. The play between the beauty, love, and care that it communicates, and at the same time, the ugly horrors and human suffering it often portrays, exploring realities in, in Syria and elsewhere. Diallo's artistic practice spans a variety of mediums, including animation, painting, comic books, illustrations, and murals. And recurring themes in her work are social justice, freedom, and a desire to work with children's perspectives. Uh, Diala, the floor is yours. Uh, hi, everyone. And I'm sorry for my voice, but I'll do my best. <laughs> I first started in 2001 working in animation. It was like for TV, uh, children TV shows and uh, different uh, children magazines as well, illustration and 
uh, comics. Uh, uh, there, it, there were like my artwork. Uh, it was totally out of uh, free expression, actually. Uh, in Syria, uh, like we have this uh, triangle, we, we can talk about uh, politics, uh, religion or sex, but uh, the shades in between, it's really large. <laughs> So, uh, like, um, when the revolution started in 2013, uh, you can, you can, uh, Dingo, you can, and Igor, you can go through. Uh, in 2013, uh, uh, so, uh, 11, sorry, uh, uh, I didn't think of using art to, to express what is happening because I gave priority to go to the street and protest and uh, preparing field hospitals. It was a big mess. Uh, 2012, and also we were not really uh, used to uh, use a, a, a different media to express. So uh, in 2012, uh, I found myself, I, I really need to express for myself more than delivering a message to others. So I started uh, 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 different uh, um, uh, illustrations. Uh, the first one uh, was a, a boy holding a balloon and uh, uh, it was like a collection called Leave Us. Uh, it was really shocking uh, for us, like targeting even kids uh, in a different ways. Uh, sometimes it's systematic, actually, especially uh, the revolution started when uh, 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 like uh, a group of kids in Dara uh, um, got arrested because they did a graffiti on uh, their school wall. Uh, so uh, I didn't expect that I, it will have a, any impact, but uh, uh, um, alternative journalists, uh, they started like using it and activists to, to uh, support their reports, which uh, encouraged me more uh, to, to do art. And it was uh, more uh, inside of our uh, circle as a Syrian activist. But uh, when I left uh, Syria in 2013, I had no other choices of activism but doing art. Uh, it was really hard from there to be involved more than this, uh, um, like uh, personally for me. So I, I, I made more uh, um, uh, um, political uh, art. Uh, then, uh, uh, like we were like participating in some protest inside of uh, Istanbul, I, I I felt it's kind of like touristy to do this there, and uh, it wasn't really satisfying. Uh, then I had a, a visit to uh, Beirut after like a long isolation in Istanbul uh, for a year and a half. So I wanted to visit uh, uh, Beirut to see my friends, but uh, it gave me this opportunity to go to refugee camps and uh, start working with kids. It was my first mural in 2014 uh, to encourage kids to go to school again after skipping for, uh, for a while. And also the impact uh, uh, of the kids, how they loved it and they wanted to register and go back to school. Uh, as an audience, it encouraged me more to do uh, murals uh, uh, around the refugee camps. <coughs> Uh, I like I started this as a person like a uh, uh, individual initiative and also sometimes I, I used to go to offer this to uh, local uh, uh, organizations uh, they are really doing a, a big effort to to uh, 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 give uh, alternative education to these kids, uh, especially uh, that it's uh, like international uh, NGOs, they are not really doing enough, in my opinion, uh, in the refugee camps. And I see there is a lot of money going there, but it's not really as much that is arriving to, uh, to the kids themselves. So we still have to volunteer uh, and uh, work uh, and do individual projects like this uh, to cover what is not covered. Uh, we saw uh, me and other activists how it's important uh, uh, to work uh, with kids as kind of uh, uh, art therapy uh, workshops and music therapy, drama therapy. Uh, I didn't uh, have the chance to study art therapy. 
uh, because of like visa uh, time and money. So I, I, tr I try to do self education like I first started art uh, in general. Uh, I read as much as I can. I, I did uh, courses of uh, drama therapy and uh, also I had advices from my therapist uh, therapist friends. So I had I try to combine all these things together to to be able to work with kids. And uh, actually, I, we, me, and m our uh, friends, the other activists, we saw how it's really uh, effective and powerful to do this with kids. Uh, uh, we had a lot of impact from uh, uh, parents and families. Uh, they say, uh, for example, our uh, my my child uh, started uh, talking again after losing the ability of talking for uh, a year or two, and uh, they have like a different behavior now, and they are more social uh, because they it's a big need. It's like maybe art. Uh, uh, it could look for others kind of luxury, but it's a big need to have uh, a therapy and the empty uh, the terror that the kids they have inside, especially and also adults. Now uh, I I lost uh, this uh, opportunity to be in co in uh, a direct contact with the kids in refugee camps. I moved to France. Uh, uh, it was not really an easy um, uh, decision for me, but uh, uh, my passport was about to expire, and I'm and I'm already blacklisted in Syria, so I can't really um, renew it. So I'm trying from here to work on different uh, topics, uh, graphic journalism. And also, I'm, I'm still uh, from time to time. Uh, if I, when I have the the chance and the space, uh, I send uh, uh, murals, uh, but on canvas, so they can uh, uh, take it there and hang it on the school tents. Because already I, when I was there, I was working on on fabric. Uh, it was twelve. Uh, it wasn't re a real wall, so uh, it was for me the same uh, material. It's just like I I work on a big uh, scale and I fold them and send them back to uh, Lebanon. <coughs> I can talk more if you want. <laughs> Thank you very much. I think uh, we're still going through some of the beautiful uh, artwork that you uh, you sent. I I suggest that we leave um, we leave you to uh, to rest a bit while uh, Indigo. I don't know whether you're on the last, but uh, just to slowly go through. And in the meantime, maybe uh, Sarah, you can uh, take over for questions and answers. Yes, thank you so much, Diala, for your presentation and sharing some of your wonderful artwork with us. I see we actually already have some hands raised uh, and also some um, comments at the moment in the comments. Uh, and if you know you have already if something you want to question or ask a question about or comment on, you know, please raise your hand because it would be great to collect a couple of questions. But I'll start with you, Fanny Delmas. You were the first to raise your hand. And oh, also, sorry, oh, also, uh, we have such a diverse yeah. audience here today. So if you want, it would be really nice if you could also just say, you know, re very briefly who you are and, you know, um, also put on your camera so we can see you. But it's uh, only if you want. <coughs> yeah, and I was just going to say that um, I'll be enabling people's microphones, but you'll have to um, just click the little microphone icon and or the camera icon, uh, icon when you uh, want to talk. So Fanny, you should be uh, enabled now to ask your question. So while we're waiting for you, Fanny, um, also I saw that um, uh, Ms. Anoud, you had a really interesting and important comment. Uh, maybe you would like to just uh, read that out and I'm, maybe it was also a question, I'm not sure. So we could also just take that while we wait for Fanny to uh, unmute herself.
Okay, okay. Mizanoor should be able to uh, speak verbally now. Can can you can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, so I my name is Mizanur Roman. I am from Bangladesh, and actually uh, I am here invited by Kasia. She was my supervisor. I'm a research purpose supervisor. I studied in ISS in Netherlands. Uh, my question was uh, actually I was looking uh, Mia poetry in Assam. Uh, for my research project. And I saw there were a lot of uh, negative controversy about the Mia poetry uh, uh, of Assamese Bengalis who actually are uh, in, in a threat of become, becoming stateless because of the Indian government action. So I saw that, you know, the, the arts, the poetry were, were about to reclaiming their identity. They were, talk, they were talking about how they are human being like other Indians and they have been living in their generations uh, in Assam, but now uh, they are being excluded from their national identity and citizenship and the human rights. But what I saw that in the mainstream media of Assam and the political leaders of Assam, they were kindly accused, they are kind of accusing, I mean, uh, uh, really, really accusing this poetry that these poetries are actually uh, creating an unrest situation in the communities. In reality, there is uh, nothing uh, harmful is being done against the Assamese and the Assamese poets, uh, Bengali Assamese poets, they are trying to uh, show the world that uh, there is a situation going on uh, uh, on like the Rohingyas, which is going on in Myanmar. And I saw some talk shows, the political leaders' uh, speeches, they are all accusing these poets and poetry. So my question was, uh, when the peace building and peacemaking process through art in the communities uh, kind of itself is scrutinized and accused of making uh, the unrest or making or creating the conflicts in this sort of situation, how can art or artists negotiate or mediate, mediate with this powerful? Because the general, the most uh, common people, uh, when I saw the YouTube comments and uh, under, under the videos, I saw that the general people, they were kind of supporting the uh, mainstream media and the political leaders. So how could uh, artists and uh, how could artists, you know, like I said, mediate through with these situations uh, through their art or, I, or, or with some other collaboration? Mm. Thank you so much. Um, I'll also try you again, Fanny. If, if you try to unmute yourself, your microphone should be enabled now. We also have uh, Farida raising their hand. Yeah, so then I'll pass the word on to you, Farida. Uh, and please note that you'll have to unmute yourself. Now you'll be able to talk, but you have to click your microphone icon in order to speak. I said my name is Farida Mehdi. I'm living in Norway and I was born in Afghanistan and I'm social anthropologist and writer. And I am very interested in, uh, in art. This is we are tradition to fighting to give awareness through the theater. And I like to, uh, to do it. But unfortunately, here in Norway, Kultur Rode, the culture advisor, I don't know what is the name in English, and they said this is not the issue for, for uh, Norwegian uh, culture um, uh, administration. And I was very disappointed, but I'm very happy that in Japan uh, make uh, my book Silent Scream to physical theater. And we have another theater in Japan and the other theater. I will talk also 
about the peace. And we have a research project to ask the people, because the problem, when you talk with Stoltenberg, the leader of NATO, he said, yeah, 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 the, the peace is difficult because the uh, people don't want peace, people want war, and all it is, it is a kind of unpowerless from the military power, from the people, always is, they say the people not, I not can make peace. But, uh, we would like to, to, to refer to the people at each of us of potential to, to make peace and different level. And this is my research and my fighting and make fun in a way. And I would like to join you, but I don't know in which country I would like to contact with you. I don't know where uh, your organization is. And my question, how to collaborate together. Thank you so much, Farida. I'll take um, the last question now from uh, Marisa, uh, who's one of the artists we're working with, before I pass on to, I think some of the researchers can answer some of the questions that have been raised here now. So Marisa, the, the floor is yours. So you need to unmute yourself, Marisa. Okay. No worries, Marisa. <laughs> uh, keep trying. And in the meanwhile, um, if you have a voice, Marta, maybe you would like to uh, comment on the first uh, question, or if not, uh, maybe Cindy or Kasia, you would also like to. Maybe we can do both questions together. Um, I start. I start. <laughs> yeah, uh, the first question, uh, it's it's really complicated question, actually. Uh, I know uh, art uh, uh, like can uh, make a, a big change in politics because we are not politicians, we are not decision makers and uh, uh, like uh, it's uh, art is, is just uh, has uh, the power of raising awareness for other people. They can take uh, the action. Um, I, I think uh, uh, sometimes even me when I was in Istanbul, I lost uh, uh, the hope of uh, having a political change uh, when uh, when we uh, we discovered that we we are not really decision makers. And I I always say that. Um, so uh, that's why uh, uh, it was my like um, my reason to to think of uh, uh, empowering alternative education because for me war is a circle. Uh, there is people they they uh, they are the business uh, people they create uh, uh, these uh, weapons and uh, they need uh, 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 like fertilize an environment to uh, to get it so if we can't really stop uh, this uh, business and we stop uh, this weapons and and this dirty politics uh, at least we can uh, raise awareness with with the kids with our environment to be uh, more aware to to not receive this uh, uh, this uh, like uh, weapons uh, and I uh, like once my friend he he was working in uh, save the children he told me uh, <coughs> Uh, when uh, we see uh, there is like a newcomers to the refugee camps, uh, how the kids they are really uh, they behave and they are really polite uh, and uh, they are uh, still quiet in a way. Uh, and after three months, everything changed and they have more aggression uh, between each other. And this is like really a big evidence how uh, things change very fast. And for me, working with kids is so important because 
it's the basic of uh, of be after and uh, I don't say like uh, adulthood it can be changed but it takes longer uh, uh, way to to change it uh, and uh, childhood in general is very short it goes like this so uh, it's uh, we ha we have either to do it now or or never and uh, I don't uh, I can't really underestimate working uh, with kids as an activism as much as we work uh, in, in uh, uh, political uh, um, causes. And this is I, I, I consider it also political working with kids. Thank you, Diala. Um, I hope I, I like I answered uh, 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 both uh, Farida as well because like uh, she's saying it's really hard to uh, to do this uh, like to raise awareness and for me I think uh, uh, because I was so disappointed for so depressed when I was in Istanbul and this this depression actually it gave me power to to do more where I can really do. If, if like we, I think if we can't really achieve our goals, we can put small goals. They are achievable. At at least uh, we can change small things. It's better than nothing. Thank you so much, uh, Diala. Um, we are actually uh, out of time, but I do want to just try to collect the last two questions. So, Marisa, I think um, Indigo has change some settings so you should hopefully be able to unmute yourself now and then also Kirill you had a, a, a question or a comment. Hello uh, yeah Marisa Cornejo and um, th thank you so much for the beautiful presentations uh, urgent and necessary I um, yeah I work as an artist and I'm from Chile and our conflict happened quite a while ago even though it, we still have new rippling effects of what happened in our country. So I have different, longer distance from the conflict in itself in my own practice. But I really got interested in what Diala was saying of, um, um, how, I would like her to tell a little bit more about therapy, how artists do therapy or have access today to, therapy for themselves become art therapists or they are sort of a, a part of the project that will analyze that. Um, it's no coincidence, but today I had a visit for a friend artist living in Geneva, exiled from Palestine, and he's working with a therapist after many, many years of, of exile. So it can be re-traumatizing and what is the view of the project or what Diala thinks will be a good plan. Thank you. Thank you, Marisa. Uh, Kirill, I think you also will be able to unmute yourself now. So you have to click the unmute yourself and then the floor is yours. Um, thank you. Uh, first of all, guys, thank you. so <clears throat> Thank you so much for putting all this together and it looks like an excellent platform uh, for the artist and those we want to be inspired uh, and use also art. Um, I had probably maybe a couple of comments, but I'll start. Uh, I have one question for them, uh, for the Farida. Farida, you mentioned that you uh, partner with uh, someone in Japan. If it's possible, please do mention the film because uh, if about 20, uh, 12 years ago, we started a film festival on refugee issues of fiction and documentary films for UNHCR in Japan and uh, we work a lot with what is going on there but not just to raise the awareness but to provide a platform for primarily for the filmmakers but also for other artists uh, to be involved in the festival and uh, so that's a question to you Farida and guys to others uh, um, I mean, beautiful artwork, uh, amazing songs, and what uh, <clears throat> our Syrian artist, I'm just looking how not to mispronounce her name, da Daila, uh, I'm sorry, uh, pardon, if I mispronounce, but I mean, you said yeah. we, we as artists are not decision makers. Um, very humble of you, but uh, I mean, you might not be a decision maker on a policy level, but I think I think artists are 
heart, soul, mind changers and including as decision changers. Uh, and that I can say not just from hearing uh, your stories, but also interacting what we managed to see with the film festival where we brought stories about uh, refugees, but also films made by refugees themselves, like from Kakuma refugee camp in Kenya and other places. I mean, some of the policy uh, people and decision makers who came to see those films and see, hear those stories, they were touched and decisions about the policy were, uh, were touched and some even changed. So guys, more power to you and uh, thank you once again. Thank you, Kirill. So, um, Fiala, I'll ask you to very, very briefly, because we're now actually five minutes over time. So if you can very briefly respond to, to the questions and um, then we'll actually have to stop it there. But this is luckily only the first of several meeting opportunities that we will be hosting through this uh, work. Yeah, um, first uh, for the question of Marisa, uh, uh, when I started working with kids uh, in the beginning in the refugee camps, I, I saw how it's a big need for the kids uh, to talk about uh, their terror inside. And uh, when uh, when we first started like uh, a free session, they were drawing about like uh, uh, killing and uh, bombing and uh, their own experience. The kids in general, uh, they have a problem uh, uh, that when something bad happened around them, they blame themselves because they are self-centered. Uh, the word self-centered is not like one direction, it's uh, both directions. So uh, even like uh, when uh, the, the adults, uh, their parents, they are around uh, they are traumatized and angry they think it's because of them they think like the war it's because of them so they need to have a space to to express themselves uh, differently it's not about the words because sometimes they don't even have the right words to to, to talk about what they want to talk about so and also uh, sometimes uh, after that I started like doing uh, exercises to connect them with with themselves to draw themselves who they are because during all this uh, uh, trauma and ex experiences, uh, they forgot who they are, they forgot that they ex even exist. So, and this exercise uh, actually, uh, it really uh, helped a lot. And uh, in the same time, I learned myself to do it for myself. Uh, if you see in the presentation, the last collection, I, I did it, it's called survival mode. I did self portray for myself. And I thought like if the kids, they are doing this, uh, I'm, I'm doing this with the kids. And, and then I, I should have the same power for myself, like to be stronger, to support the others. Um, and the second, um, yes, uh, maybe uh, thank you for uh, like uh, saying that we have the power. I think we are influencers. Uh, of course, we can change, but politically, I I, I find it very hard, and I can't. Uh, for sometimes having this hope, it's exhausting. Uh, so that's why I feel like uh, I took this decision that we can't change small things, and these small things that they become bigger. So, <laughs> thank you, Diala. Very wise, wise words at the end there. Um, Kasia, you will get the final word, and maybe also you can just mention how people have met, several people have mentioned. You know, how can we collaborate or cooperate or you know continue um, following this project? So, thank you all. Uh, thank you so much. We are coming to, we run over time a little bit, uh, We, uh, but this was such an amazing, uh, inspiring way to, to also launch this website. I hope that we um, made you curious about the project more. And I think we've, I, I just hear that through these conversations, we've opened up new collaborations already. Uh, listening to Marisa and listening to Diala, I think you have a conversation uh, in, in its making. And I think uh, uh, Dahab, uh, you also uh, can join because I know we've talked a lot about uh, these issues, what, you know, what music means also. Uh, how can it be uh, therapeutic? But not only, it's also an expression of, uh, of, of the things that we go through and in terms of influences I think you've you've also have played such an important role in influencing the bigger 
the smaller and the bigger uh, uh, the bigger things. So I think there is a lot of conversations we need to continue. Um, for those of you who are interested, I'm sorry we didn't say this at the beginning, but the research project, uh, I think Cindy, actually in fact you did say it, so I'll just repeat it. Uh, the research project and the collaborative project with the artists uh, is based at the Peace Research Institute in Oslo. So physically we are based there, but uh, we work in different places. Uh, uh, we work, as Cindy said, uh, in Norway, in Netherlands. I am based in Geneva, so I work with artists in Geneva and in France. Uh, but we are also open to other collaborations across. So please uh, reach out to us on the website. You will find our contacts and uh, and uh, there is many ways uh, we can open up these collaborations. If you also want to be part of the project Farida, for example, uh, I think there is a lot of space for this and we would be delighted to, to continue these conversations. Um, I'm just going to say uh, from September, we're starting a seminar series and I think some of these conversations will continue there. So also, if you are interested in joining, please uh, stay tuned in. We didn't have a chance to hear from the researchers today, but uh, yeah. but I hope we can meet them, uh, Marte and, and Trude. Uh, they can uh, they can also participate in the next meeting. So we also hear their voices and the voices of other uh, artists. Please uh, stay in touch with us. Uh, Indigo has recorded the conversation, so I think at some yeah. point it's also going to be available for those who couldn't watch it. And we wanted to thank you so much for this uh, celebration. And uh, yeah, we will celebrate today because this was a beautiful way to, to start. And tomorrow, remember, Dahab is releasing her song. So listen to that. OK, thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.